Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So we are looking at various applications of this paradigm of least squares, that is the different applications uh, where least squares can be employed and in general least squares has uh, is a very flexible and powerful paradigm and um, is apply, uh, uh, can be applied in a variety of scenarios. Uh, in this module, let us look at another interesting application and that will, will be in the context of image processing, specifically in the context of image deblurring. Okay. So you want to look at yet another interesting application and in fact there are umpteen number of applications of uh, the least squares paradigm. So to just to illustrate the versatility of this framework, let us look at an application in the context of image processing. Okay. Specifically in the context of uh, image deep blurring. Okay. So we want to look at the deep blurring of image. Uh, now uh, just before we formulate the mathematical problem, let us just look at what it the physical relevance of this. What happens is when you are trying to capture the image, let us say you are trying to capture trying to make a figure of a person over here and when you try to capture an image of a person and uh, so this is an impression of my camera and I am trying to capture the image of this person and uh, now if this a person or if this object is in let us say so so, this is basically image capture device which is your camera or can be uh, in fact this can be extended to the context of videos also. So, this is not necessarily applicable only for images but can be applied also for videos. If this object which you are trying to image or which whose image you are trying to capture is in motion then this leads to a blur alright. So, this Remember when you have typically you might have seen in fact the blur effect that is artificially applied for instance um, on things typically on uh, the images of uh, let us say cars or vehicles that are captured to give the impression that something is in motion that an object is in motion and when the object is in motion that naturally gives rise to blur. So, the blur effect is basically associated with motion and blur can uh, also it is it is basically a degrading effect of an image and can also arise from several other factors such as environmental factors, atmospheric factors, motion of uh, the wind motion etcetera. So, in general motion leads to blur and this is termed as motion blur ok. Motion is one of the predominant causes of blur and therefore to get a clean image implies image has to be deep blurred. Now, one way to model the motion blur is the following, let us say you have the output pixel y of k. So, the model for blur model, let us look at it, the blur model can be described as follows. Let us say you have an output pixel y of k that can be described as l equal to 0 to l minus 1 the input pixel or the blur kernel h of l times x of k plus l ok. So, let me just write this equation down for instance we have y of 0 equals h of 0 x of 0 plus h of 1 x of 1 plus h of l minus 1 x of uh, l minus 1 ok and uh, you can also write this as y of 1 or you can just or you can make this uh, that is fine it does not matter you can write this as y of 1 equals h of 1 times x of 0 times x of 1. Uh, or let me just write this as follows. I can write this as h of 0 times x of 0, uh, y of 1 is h of 0 times 
x1 just to make this system causal although it does not it uh, does not really matter because the image processing can be non causal so this is h of 0 times x of 1 plus h of 1 times x of 0 and uh, i can write y of 2 equals h of 0 times uh, x of 2 plus h of 1 times x of 1 plus h of 2 times x of 0. You can take the past pixels here to be 0. So, you can write this as h of l x of k minus l uh, and you can assume that uh, the past pixels for instance x of minus 1 x of minus 2 so on equals 0 that is this is a causal signal that is this uh, is a signal which is 0 for n less than 0 all right. And uh, so what you can see here is that each so this is the output pixel okay so this y k this is your output pixel and these are your input or original you can think of this as input pixels or original image pixels okay so these are the original image pixels and what you can see is that the each output pixel is a combination is a linear combination of several input pixels so you cannot you are not getting the crisp original pixels but each pixel is sort of smudged right each pixel is sort of smashed or combined along with other pixels and that what that is what gives the blurring effect that is when you combine that is when you are not getting the clear individual pixels but rather you are getting a combination of these pixels that is x y of 2 the combination of x of 2 x of 1 and x of 0 so you are combining these pixels all right and that is what gives the blur effect so the linear combination of pixels is what is giving you the blur effect the linear combination of pixels is giving you the blur effect and therefore the input output blur model can be represented as follows let us say you have a group of output pixels that is which you are representing by the vector y of 0, y of 1 up to y of let us say m minus 1 that is total number of pixels is m. So, you call this your output pixel vector. We are considering a single a column of an image. So, this is your output pixel vector. This is equal to well h of 0 okay h of 1 times h of 0 and uh, so on and so forth and this matrix has an interesting structure uh, this is in fact this is x of 0 x of 1 up to x of m minus 1 and the second row is h of 2 h of 1 h of 0 and of course you can also have noise now in addition you can also have noise but let me just ignore this for a little bit okay uh, just to simplify this model a little bit although in technique in practice you can also have noise or let us make this let us add the noise it does not matter okay and uh, now what you can see is y of 0 is h of 0 times x of 0 y of 1 is h of 0 h of 0 times x of 1 plus h of 1 times so it also depends so it combines both x1 and x2 x0 similarly y of 2 combines x0 x1 x2 so on. so each pixel is a combination a linear combination of the pixel itself uh, and the original pixel and some neighboring pixel and that is what gives the blur effect 
and this matrix which so this is the output pixel this is the original input pixel vector we are considering as I said a single column of pixels okay and this is basically your filter matrix this is also known as a filter matrix because you are representing the blur by this filter filter this linear this filter is represented by this linear transformation characterized by this matrix I can call this matrix as matrix H this is your filter matrix or your blur matrix and this uh, filter which you are repeating along the low rows this is also called the kernel or this is basically your blur kernel all right. So, I can represent the blurring effect in a in the image as this linear system. So, the blur model can be the blur effect in fact, this can this model can also be introduced used to introduce blur all right to get that blur effect in images for instance, we want to give the effect of an object being in motion such as a car being in motion this linear transformation can be used all right. So, this can be used both ways either to recover the original image from the given output vector y bar or given input vector y bar x bar to introduce the blur effect one can use this linear input output system model all right. Now, the point that in the problem that we are considering is the other way not specifically that is given a blurry image how to de blur it. All right. And now, once you formulate this problem, so this is your original image, okay. I am representing a single column, although this can be easily extended to a two dimensional uh, uh, original image, and uh, this can be easily extended to two dimensional, in fact, three dimensional images also, which is with nothing but video that is, you have x axis, y axis, and in the time. Right. So, one can have three dimensional blurring effect so as to speak. So, all right. So, you can have original image and uh, this can be extended I will just note here can be extended easily to 2 D images plus video. And uh, therefore, how to reconstruct the original image? We know that. Now, we have this model or output image y bar equals the blur matrix h x bar plus the noise vector. So, this is your blur matrix and to reconstruct the original image or to recover we now apply the least squares all right and therefore what we do is minimize norm of y bar minus h x bar square implies the estimate or the reconstructed image or the de blurred image is the pseudo inverse of h uh, we have no, we have not introduced this notation so far let me just describe this this is nothing but h transpose h inverse h transpose y bar, where we are denoting this matrix by h dagger this is known as h dagger equals the we have already said this this is acts as a left inverse this is the pseudo inverse of h ok. Not the inverse, but the pseudo inverse this is the left inverse of h and this x hat is now your de blurred or reconstructed de blurred or reconstructed image this is your de blurred or reconstructed image and therefore what you can see now is that yet another interesting applications of the least squares paradigm it is a very interesting application it can be applied we have already seen another application that is for channel estimation in a wireless multi antenna system it can also be used uh, for de blurring of images in image processing and therefore, reconstructing or recovering the original images all right. And, and therefore, uh, the least squares paradigm in general has many applications several applications it is one that arises very frequently and in fact, in several uh, different areas signal processing and communication and also other scientific disciplines all right. So, we will stop here 
and continue in the subsequent models. Thank you very much.